Hello friends, welcome to my series on looping. I'm Dan Phelps. And this week we're gonna talk about using the Chase Bliss Audio Blooper as kind of a weird delay line audio manipulation device that switches back and forth between being a delay and being a looper. It's kind of weird and liquid and fluid like that. So without further ado, let's jump in. So if you've been following along, you saw my video last week wherein I used the blooper in a kind of a unusual fluid delay mangling sort of device that also turns into a looper and goes back and forth between those two things. What I mean is that with the blooper, you're able to set it so that it doesn't repeat infinitely. Repeating infinitely would make it like a standard looper. But if you turn down the repeats knob, the sound slowly dies out over time, not unlike a delay. The cool thing about this is that all of the bloopers built in effects and weird sound modifying features are still in effect. So you sort of have a really mangled altered delay that at a moment's notice, either by taking the blooper out of record or turning the repeats knob all the way up, you can turn back into a normal looper. So I've been doing a series of improvisations every day using the blooper. If you look on my Instagram or Facebook page for the hashtag bloops, I did it again, you'll find all of these. And one of them really stuck out to me because it kind of showed in a fully performative and improvisational setting how this works, this sort of two state function that the blooper has. If you haven't seen that video, go back to the previous week and then join me back here because I think you'll enjoy it and it'll be sort of an illuminating example of kind of what we're going for. Here in this video, I'm gonna show you how the blooper functions in this weird sort of dual mode. So let's not delay, get it? Let's get into it. Let me show you how I use the blooper as a sort of messed up delay line. We put it in additive mode, back the repeats off somewhat, and just to begin with, why don't we put modifier B into filter mode, roll off a little bit of the high end, and add just a little bit of instability via the stability knob. In order to achieve this effect, the blooper needs to be in record. So what I'll do is set a loop length. And put it into overdub mode. You can hear, because we're in additive mode, each cycle of the delay gets more and more of the effect applied to it, making for a continually deteriorating sort of delay effect. I'm going to turn up a little bit of the reverb just to blend things together. So one cool thing to do with this is to simply put the blooper into record and let it fill up to its full 30 seconds of recording time before it starts to play things back to you. And this is neat because it sort of becomes like you're having a duet with the past version of yourself.
Also, you can activate the other modifiers momentarily to add in some unusual textures to the loop. Should you end up with something that you really like, you can always put the looper into playback mode, which basically locks the loop in as you have created it. It doesn't change or degrade anywhere from here. So this is the neat way that the blooper sort of seamlessly moves back and forth between these looping and delay line states. It's neat because if you create something that you like, it doesn't disappear. You can lock it in and spend a lot of time playing against it. Learning to operate the blooper seamlessly so that you can sort of move through all these different effects, modifiers, uh, and states, different modes is awesome because you kind of end up with an improvising companion, something that is not just spitting back exactly what you have recorded into it, it's actually rearranging, mangling, and representing the audio in a new way. Similarly, you can get fairly avant-garde with this sound. So not only has Chase Bliss given you 
a looping pedal, they've given you a really powerful and weird delay pedal as well in the same enclosure. And the ability to switch seamlessly back and forth between those two modes is huge for people who want to do improvisational live performances and create textures and moods on the fly. Well, there you have it. I think that's a really powerful sort of dual function feature that the blooper provides you that makes improvising and solo performancing, solo performing, uh, really fun and, and interesting and kind of allows you to sort of have a duet with yourself uh, because what you're playing is being captured by the blooper and recontextualized and fed back to you in interesting ways. Super fun. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything that I post. And if you want to go deeper into the music and mindset and what I'm enjoying side of things with me, visit my website www.danphelps.com and subscribe to receive my emails. Uh, I send them out once a week the same day that the videos post, but they always include more information and also links to things that I'm fascinated by or learning from at any given time. So I'd love to have that communication with you as well. You can always email me at hello at danphelps.com. Find me on Instagram and Facebook. I'll put those links below. And I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you next week.